In a previous video, we talked about Boyle's Law, where pressure and volume are an inverse, or P times V equals a constant. We have also talked about Charles' Law, where volume and temperature are directly proportional, so V over T is a constant. Today, I want to look at the combined gas law, which is just a combination of Boyle and Charles. And so if you smush these two equations together, you get something that looks like this. You get PV over T equals a constant. And just as we did before, when you have the variables on one side and the constant on the other, you can rewrite the same expression to say P times V over T for the initial conditions will equal P times V over T for the final conditions, or P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. This is probably the most useful form of the combined gas law. Now for this equation to work, we notice that moles are not included. So just as before, if we want to have one of these equations work, we have to keep the variables that aren't included in the equation constant. So in this case, we would have to keep the amount of gas constant to use to combine gas law. So let's give it a try. I have a sealed container with a volume of 1.35 liters and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And the pressure measured inside is 1.1 atmospheres. Right, so I'm starting off well. A sealed container means that the amount of gas is being held constant. No gas can get in and no gas can get out. I'm given a volume, I'm given a pressure, and I'm given a temperature. So this is a good setup for the combined gas law. The volume of this container is changed to 0.75 liters, and the temperature is increased to 215 degrees Celsius. This question is asking, what will be the new pressure? Just like with Charles' law, temperatures in Celsius are a no-no. You have to be in an absolute temperature, so you have to be in a Kelvin scale. So T1 here is given as 25 degrees Celsius, but we want to convert that to 298 Kelvin. Remember, we add 273 to get to Kelvin. T2 is 215 degrees Celsius, which comes out to 488 Kelvin. Now that I have units in the correct form, I can apply the combined gas law. Remember, P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And what we are looking for is we're looking for the new pressure. So I can do a little cross multiplying. You know I like to do the algebra first. I can multiply both sides by T2, and I can divide both sides by V2. So when I rewrite the combined gas law, I can say P1 V1 T2 all over T1 times V2 will equal P2. And this is what we're looking for, the new pressure. So now we just have to plug in our values. My initial pressure is 1.1 atmospheres. My initial volume is 1.35 liters and we converted our final temperature, T2, to 488 Kelvin. I'm going to divide that whole thing by my initial temperature, which is 298 Kelvin, times my final volume, which is 0 0.75 liters. I can check my work because my liters will cancel out, my Kelvin will cancel out. I'm going to be left with atmospheres, which are the units that I want. And then one final word of warning. If you're plugging this all in the calculator, make sure that you're dividing by the entire bottom of your fraction. All right, so if you're putting this all in at once, make sure you're using parentheses. So let's finish it up. We solve this, we get 3.24 liters.